straight from the Eastman's vault. Let's go hunting for mule deer in Colorado's high country. Hi folks, welcome to today's show. Today we're in Colorado in November on a mule deer hunt for trophy bucks. Last night was the last night of the season on the third season mule deer hunt here in Colorado. We just packed out of the backcountry today, this morning. It was an exciting hunt, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go back and see how this hunt started after trophy mule deer in the high country in Colorado in November. Well, we just got here into Colorado. It's uh, Monday afternoon. The season started on Saturday, but it's the first week of November. But as you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty nice. So it's kind of a cold turkey hunt. We got some maps, studied the maps and topos and asked some biologists, talked to some people I know that have hunted the area before. So got a few tips here and there. We got five days to hunt. So let's see what happens. Went into an area the first night, hiked back in there three or four miles, and it just didn't look good. We, we didn't see any deer. We cut our losses, pulled out of there, broke camp, went to town, got some more supplies, went around the mountain and into a, uh, a different part of the unit. You know, after we got our supplies, we bombed into a different part of the unit set up our base camp and you know it was hard it looked really good it looked more like what we had thought colorado mule deer hunting should look like but we were patient we, we just sat behind the optics glassed all the country for a good day and a half two days just to get the lay of the land and really spot some good bucks and figure out where the deer were and where the biggest concentration of bucks were Here's the situation. Nate and I have been camping down here for three days, and what's happening is it's the first week of November, but the weather's just too darn nice. It's been in the 60s, like every day, not exactly what you'd hope for on a mule deer hunt in the first week of November. What we found is these bucks are high. They're clear up at the tops of these peaks still. What we've done, we spotted a big buck at the top of that peak over there. Uh, this morning, we're looking at four and a half to five miles away uh, that we spotted this buck. So it's hard to judge him. You can just see his frame. You can't see how long his points are, any of that kind of thing. But he's certainly at least this tall and nice and wide, big, boxy, huge body buck. So it's definitely too far for a day hunt. So Nate and I are going to have to pack up on our backs and go in and do an overnighter. Probably take us all day to get in there and hopefully we can get on him tonight or first thing in the morning. There's a little buck. We're back here about six, seven miles. We spotted some bucks up in these basins from way back at our other camp. So we packed in here, Bibby bivouacked in here seven miles where we're getting ready to cross the creek and here's a nice little buck, but not, not the type of buck we want to pack out of here. He's a little four point, about 23, 24 inches wide. Just a real nice buck. He's coming down to water in the creek, I think. So we're gonna pass on him and load up and head up up the mountain into these basins where uh, there'll be the big boys hanging out. So get a little drink here and then we'll head up, steam up the mountain. Pretty good sign though. See a buck right off the bat like that. Once we got our spike camp set up, Nate and I got out on a point and just started glassing that evening all the basins. Again, we didn't run around crazy. We got to a good vantage point where we could see five or six basins from one spot and just glassed and glassed. Well, we're positioned up here. Tonight is the second to the last night of the hunt. Tomorrow's the last day. But we spotted a lot of bucks on all these hillsides this morning. As you can see where our main camp is, 
It's clear across there at the base of those mountains with the snow on them. And we spotted bucks from there over to here. So on the map, as a bullet flies, it's probably four and a half miles. But to hike in here, you have to come a roundabout way and it's almost seven miles. So see what happens in the morning. It's gonna be a long cold night in the baby camp. Up here at this elevation, holy mackerel. What are we doing up here, Nathan? The 8th of November. <laughs> we do not recommend this. Well, this isn't uh, exactly the D JW Marriott Hotel, but it'll work. This isn't really what we expected. Coming down here to Colorado, we're at 9,000 feet, almost. Just shy of 9,000 feet on the 8th of November in uh, central Colorado in the Rockies, but it's been so warm and dry that these bucks are, are still up here where they spend their summer. So we've had to throw our packs on our back and come in here and bivy out. Tomorrow's the last day of the season. It's gonna be a chilly night, but we're right in their backyard now, man. We're right in their living room. In the morning, we got up first light, got back on that vantage point and start glassing again and start turning up bucks everywhere. Here we are, we got, uh, Nate and I got up early this morning just as the sun was coming up, went up to our vantage point and glassed and sure enough, we found quite a few bucks, but uh, one of the more promising prospects we found was about a 180 buck rutting some does at the top of the basin actually that we're camped in. So, we're gonna hike up there. They went and bedded in the Quaker patch. Hopefully we get up there, we can see into the Quakers where they're bedded. We're going ultra light, taking everything out of our packs we don't need. Just bushwhack to the top and see what happens. caught that buck out in the open and it was in the middle of the day, like one o'clock in the afternoon. I couldn't believe my eyes. And that smart sucker watched us walk right past him. He just laid there in that brush and watched us walk right on by because we were walking on the inside of the ridge in the basin he was laying in because we were trying to hide ourselves from the bucks that we were actually hunting, which were in the next basin over. And we almost got to the top of that basin and spotted him down there and we were debating how to make a move on him because he's out in the open, we're out in the open, and this bull, you know, 1,500 feet above him. Gotta figure out how we're gonna kill that buck. That's a big buck. It's a really big buck. He's acting ruddy, he's got some does there, and he's actually not really paying attention to does. He was trying to run off a little four-point buck more than anything. He was all puffed up, prancing around, posturing, and then he went over to a tree and just started raking the heck out of this tree. Well, the does dropped off the little bench that's uh, up in that basin, so they couldn't see us. So Nate and I just decided to bomb down off there, figuring, hey, the buck's preoccupied, raking his antlers, let's just make a move. The brush is so thick, we can just see the tops of the bushes moving, and every once in a while we catch a, a glimpse of antler or a piece of hair, but definitely nothing good for a shot. And he was only probably 150 yards away from us. Then he just quit raking his antlers, and we had to make a move because it was gonna get dark, and we had looked at that basin the night before, and he never came out in the evening, so there was no uh, guarantee he was gonna come out in the evening on the last night of the last day of the hunt. You know, we had to take a gamble and make a move on him.
think I can sneak it right through. Got him. Huh? I think you got him. Dude, that is a buck. That is Huge buck. the buck of my dreams, man. Public land, do it yourself. Colorado. How high are we? 10,100. <laughs> I just saw this white, you know, white nose and muzzle watching us like we we're walking to yep. camp. He thought we were elk hunters. Nice spot. Ah, I got a deer tag in my pocket. <laughs> that, my friends, is public land hunting, do it yourself. The Eastman Way. Holy mackerel. Nate and I spotted this buck because we were going after another one. We were up at 11,000 feet. We spotted him back down here. We had to come all the way back down another thousand feet. And we came across, circled around here. And I said, you know, I remember looking at this last night. I said, you can look up into that brush pretty well from the side. So we just eased along here, glassed, eased, glassed, eased, glassed. And luck be a lady, because I looked over there and I just see this big pumpkin head and this gray white face and a black nose just staring at us, watching us walk along this hillside. Gotta love it. We got work to do now, baby. We might be at base camp after all. We're seven miles in, so it's a three, almost a three hour pack out of here once we get to our camp. Holy mackerel. I love this country. Big buck rub right here. Where we were sitting up there, we couldn't see him. I saw the trees moving. He's probably been living in here all summer. Whole insurance policy just in case. Nozzle insurance. Here he is. That'll work one and eight. That'll do. Oh my. Lights out, folks. Look at that buck. This is what high country dreams are made of right here, boys. This is a rutted up third season Colorado public land buck. He's got five, six on this side, count the eye guards, and seven on this side. So just a gorgeous six by seven in the prime of his life. We actually spotted these bucks, no kidding from almost five miles away at our base camp with our spotting scope. So those big Swarovski 80 millimeters, you dial them up and we saw him from five miles away. No easy way to get to him, no easy way. We, we saw a guy packing out an elk hunter, old cowboy packer, and he said, you fellas get a buck up there, you've earned it. And let me tell you, we earned it with this buck because there's no, no slam dunks back here in this back country but it just makes it all the more sweeter when you do connect with a big old buck like this. What a trophy. That's what I love doing. One of my favorite activities is punching tags, especially on a big old buck like this. Public land, do it yourself. This is just about as good as it gets. You can see he's, he's got six on one side, seven on the other. Got some real nice cheaters, gnarly bases. He's been rubbing, he's still got fresh uh, oak brush, pulp on his base is just a really trophy buck. Now we're gonna get him all broke down. It's gonna be a trek back to the truck. So it's been a heck of a hunt. Thanks for spending the time with us. Remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next week on Eastman's Hunting Journal.